Hi guys, Ross here. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Today we're going to be looking at how to create this landscape using Cinema 4D and Redshift. We're going to be going over how to set this scene up, kind of breaking it down step by step, how to set the grass up, and then we're also going to talk about color user data. This is a really powerful technique to essentially be able to control different parameters within your assets without having to keep diving into the materials. So we're going to touch on that briefly and I think it's going to be a really interesting one. If you do find the video helpful, I'd really, really appreciate it if you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. And if you do enjoy the video, leave a comment in the comment section down below to let me know. I really, really do appreciate it. Okay, without further ado, that's enough of me waffling. Let's jump into the video. So in Cinema 4D, and this is the scene setup, I think the best thing for me to do is kind of break down everything, go step by step, and then we're going to look at rebuilding the grass. So let me just disable everything. Uh, that's also going to help to speed up as it is a little bit heavy. Um, and let's just go step by step. So we're starting off with the water. Um, pretty simple water, but this time I am doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm using this Maxon Noise. Now you guys know that usually I will crank the scale up like this so it, it looks a lot more like elongated and a lot more kind of like longer ripples. This time I decided to keep everything uniform uh, so it looks like this and I'm using the turbulence and I think this gives it more of like an ocean feel where the kind of bump feels a bit more randomized, doesn't look as linear. Uh, I think yeah it just helps to break it up a little bit, it looks a bit more realistic. The next thing I did was I actually used a Maxon Noise for the refraction transmittance. Now I think I need to enable the landscape for this to kind of really become apparent. So this is a slightly different technique for me and I've, I'm really happy with the results. I think it looks a lot more realistic and let me kind of explain uh, the differences. So usually what I would do is I would just grab a landscape object like this one at the back for example. And I would just scatter these throughout my water and kind of just resting them on the surface, just intersecting a little bit. The problem with this is that if, you know, if I disable this really quick and let's just drag this landscape down uh, all the way to the front. The problem with this is that first of all, you can kind of see the landscape where it finishes at the bottom, like underneath the water. So you get this hard edge, which obviously doesn't look great. But also you're not really getting any shade variation in the water because there's no kind of like seabed underneath the water so you don't capture that depth so what i've done on this occasion uh, which is probably how i'm going to set up my scenes going forward is i essentially have created another plane uh, which i then added a displacer object to so here's my little backup version um, and let me just jump out of the camera so i can kind of explain this a bit better uh, I've added a displacer to the plane, so I've literally duplicated the water plane and then added a displacer and you then just go into shading and you add a noise and this is going to kind of displace it and add this variation but as you can see we still have areas which go underneath the water um, as well as bits that go over the water so you're basically creating like a seabed underneath the water which obviously is more realistic and you can see in the render view we're now getting some much more interesting kind of color variations in the water you can see like really nicely kind of uh, where the landscape is finishing and it's giving this kind of like glow around it almost and yeah it just looks a lot more realistic and the best thing about this is that it's all procedural so you can just change the seed of this noise and you're going to get completely different results um, so yeah really really interesting way to kind of generate different landscapes quickly uh, so yeah i'm just going to delete that and go back to my original one um, so yeah, here we go. This is my landscape object. So we've got the water, we've got the landscape, and let's just dive into the material of the water again really quickly. So we have this max on noise, which I'm actually going to delete for now. Uh, this is just the preset water material, but then if you come down to your transmittance color, I've then plugged in kind of the shade of the water I want it to be. So this kind of like nice bluey turquoise aqua color. Um, but if you wanted it to be like red, for example, you can do that. Uh, you can change it to red. And it's just going to give you some really nice variation. You know, the landscape is doing some really nice work underneath here. So essentially, the blue areas of the water are like the really deep areas. And that's why, you know, you're not seeing the red come through. And then the red is the more shallow areas. So um, you're actually kind of getting the color from the seabed bounce back and then transfer to this red color. So you can play with this and get some really nice results. Um, but what I actually did is I used a Maxon Noise. So hopefully you guys can kind of make this out in the video, but you can see I've split it up using this kind of blue and green. If I change this to like a red, you'll probably see it better. 
Here we go. So I've got this red and blue. So that's basically just kind of randomizing the color of the transmittance throughout our water. So all I do is then plug that into the refraction transmittance, which is the same box we were just fiddling with a minute ago. And all that does is just adding some more color variation to the water. Um, you can obviously get really stylized with this by adding some cool colors and making them super saturated. Um, but I think this helps to just add another level of detail. The final thing I then did was just change the scatter scale to 0.001. All that does is kind of uh, smooth it out a tiny bit and it also kind of blurs the intersections a little bit as well. So that looks a little bit more realistic. Um, and yeah, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, but it's just nice to have. If I put it to zero, you're going to see it's not, it's not too much different at all really. Okay, cool. So that's the water. The sand is just a material I built myself. Very, very simple. Just like this yellow color. And then I created a Maxon noise like this uh, and plugged it into the bump. And that just kind of added like a tiny bit of a sand detail. I knew it was going to be covered in grass, so I didn't bother kind of spending too much time on it. Then added these two landscapes in the background with just a plain blue texture on it, just to kind of make it feel a bit more surreal. Just throwing in a random color in there uh, also helps to kind of tie it to the water, which is nice. Then we have these rock assets. These, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, are free assets from Quixel Megascans. So if you download their Quixel Bridge, which by the way is phenomenal, um, so easy to use, you can literally export the assets straight into cinema. Uh, yeah, I couldn't recommend it highly enough. Um, but I just went down, grabbed this rock, and all of these rocks are the exact same one, but I've just changed the rotation and the scale slightly. Um, so they do look a bit different. So you can really kind of reuse these assets um, without you know having to add loads of variation in there. So all you have to do if you haven't downloaded the asset is you'll get an icon like this, hit download, and then it will change to this blue export icon. Hit that and you know I'll, I'll show you right now. It's gonna press, it's gonna say export to cinema, export successfully and boom, straight into our scene. And it's already gonna link all the textures up for you. So you know, it's really, really is a time saver. Um, I then have exported the grass as well so you're going to see when I enable the grass uh, here there we go and yeah same exact thing with the grass so I just got this ribbon grass which is their only free grass asset um, and I just plugged that into a matrix object and then scattered it across the landscape so I'm going to show you guys how I set up this grass because I do use some really cool color user data here which I can just change and basically update the color of the grass without having to actually dive into the material. So let me show you guys how I set this up and then I think we'll pretty much be there. And the final thing I did for this scene was I added this sky texture and it's a pretty simple setup. You just find like a texture online, um, drop it onto a plane of the same dimensions as the image. Uh, I just put it into the emission color and yeah, that's it, job done. Um, I'll show you the setup, very simple. Texture into the emission color and then set it to two so it's nice and bright. Um, and the only thing I did do is I dropped the opacity down to 70%. So essentially it's kind of like semi-transparent, which means we get a nice blend of the redshift sky and the sky texture. So yeah, that is the setup. And now I'm gonna show you guys how to create your grass. So let's just delete this quickly. Delete the grass material and let's go to bridge. So we're gonna export the grass here. Hit that, exporting to Cinema 4D, export successfully. And yeah, by default, I think there's going to be five variations, which is really useful. Um, that's just going to help to add some more randomization to our scene. And I'm just going to put all of those in a null by hitting Alt-G. Um, and I'm just going to drag them out of the view of the camera. We don't want those big grass things just plopped in the middle. Okay, so they're there. That's cool. We're then going to go up to MoGraft and Matrix Scatter. Now, if you're not on the latest version of Redshift or you haven't updated your cinema, you may not have that. Don't worry, all you need to do is grab a normal matrix and then go to redshift tags and redshift object. That's then going to give you this particles tag and it's the exact same as the redshift and matrix scatter. Okay, cool. So by default, we're going to get this grid of clones here. This obviously isn't what we want. We want to change this to object and then we want to drop in our landscape object just like that. Let me go into my camera. And let's crank the count up. Let's put it up to like a thousand. And you can see we're going to start to see these squares. Let's maybe go to like a hundred thousand just to really go over the top. And there you go. So by default, it's going to give you these spheres. Again, not what we want. We want to have our grass in there. So what we need to do is go to our Redshift object tag and change the mode from optimized spheres to custom objects. This is going to allow us to drag in our grass assets and use these to populate our landscape. 
So we're just going to select all the grass assets, hit the redshift object tag and then drag these in. These are now scattering our landscape, lovely, looking good, but they are looking a little bit too big and way too green for my liking. So a couple things we need to do. First of all, I'm going to drop the scale multiplier down to like 0.25, so that's going to turn them into a quarter of their original size. Really quick way to be able to do that. Um, I had someone mention on one of the videos about the cubes being too big in your viewport, so if you want to do it a different way, you can leave that at 1 and then go to your matrix object and go to transform and change the size of them in here. And this is going to actually decrease the size of the cubes in the viewport. So you can do it either way. Um, doesn't really make much of a difference. The next thing we need to do is rotate these at the moment they're lying down. So we just need to go here and set this to minus 90. I don't know why um, the matrix object works like that. Um, but yeah, for some reason they all come in lying down no matter what asset I use. So just change this to minus 90 and you'll be good to go. Uh, the other thing you can do is untick align clone which will fix this but the only problem is they're then facing upwards and they don't kind of face the orientation of the object they're being scattered on. So I usually just leave that uh, enabled and just go to the transform and set it to minus 90. Okay, so we've got our grass in, you know, and it's looking decent, but we want to be able to take it to the next level and just add some more randomization in there and also just talk about a few other things we can do using effectors. So I'm going to go up to MoGraph, Effector, and Random Effector. And by default, this is going to send everything crazy. Um, and that is because the position parameter is enabled by default. So we're going to disable that. So that should put them back onto the landscape. And the first thing we want to do is go to scale and just randomize the scale of these grass assets just to kind of mix them up a little bit. So a bit like Forrester, you can go in and change each parameter individually. So I could go to the Y axis and make some taller than others, which is cool. But what I like to do is normally just leave those at zero, enable uniform scale, and then set this to something like 0 0.5. So now they're going to be scaled randomly proportionally, which is just going to look a lot cleaner, a lot nicer. Um, and yeah, still add some variation in there. So you can see some are smaller than others now, and it just looks a lot more natural. Next thing I'm going to do is enable rotation and set the top parameter to 360. You can see if I decrease this or increase it, you can see how the clones in the viewport are starting to spin around. So yeah, I just set that to 360 so that they're all randomly rotated on that axis. And then I'll put something like five into both of these. So you can see how some of them now are kind of leaning in certain directions more than others. So again, all just helping to make it feel a bit more natural, a bit more randomized. And you know, it's really coming together. So I think for the final render, I bumped the count up to like a million. Now, this is my second time recording this video and I can tell you that that really does slow down the project. So I'm gonna leave it at 100,000 for now. So the next thing I would do for this is add color user data. Now this is a really powerful tool we can use to kind of speed up our workflow. So what essentially we can do is control the color straight from our matrix object as opposed to having to go into the material and kind of change it. So we're going to set that up. First we need to create our user data which is going to control the color and we can do that just by coming to this user data tab here and hitting add user data. Now this is available on any object. You can see if I selected something like the landscape user data is there. So you can do this for anything pretty much. So we're going to go to user data, add user data, and we're going to get this menu pop up. And we want to change the name to CD. Now this stands for color data. And you do have to use a capital C and change the data type to color. And you're going to see this is going to change the interface. And now we have this color slider. So we're going to hit OK. And you're going to see that now we have this user data tab under our matrix object. Now, it's not going to do anything, and that's because in the material for the grass, we need to link that to this color user data. So we're going to open our ribbon grass material. And this is the material straight from Quixel, and I have to say they are really good straight off the bat, um, so props to them. But we're going to add a color user data node to this. So all we need to do is press Shift-C. It's going to bring up our little mini menu. And we're going to press, and we're going to type color user data. There we go. And let's just output this to the surface just so we can see what's happening. And you can see that our grass has gone black. Now that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, we need to type in CD into our attribute name, which is then gonna reference our color user data on our matrix object. 
We then need to go to our matrix object and go to the user data tab and let's play with the color. So this should now reflect in our render view, which it is, beautiful. And you can kind of see how this is gonna work. So um, obviously now we're not, uh, we haven't got any of the texture, but if we go back to our material and let's plug this into the diffuse and let's also plug it into our translucency color just so that that works as well. And then let's output this. And there we go, we now have our blue grass. So this is really intuitive because now we can just go into our user data and just kind of update the color from here without having to keep going into the material of our grass and kind of tweaking things there. So this is a really fun way to be able to change the color of objects. And there's so much you can do with user data that I'll probably do a separate video on it. Um, but this is the very basics of it. So the final thing I want to talk about with a matrix object is how we can use an effector to essentially cut off where the scattering is happening. So for example, if we didn't want to scatter it underneath the water, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to set that up. So we're going to go up to MoGraph, Effector and Plane Effector. Now a bit like the random effector, it's going to have the position parameter enabled by default. So let's just disable that go to scale, uniform scale, and then minus one. So essentially what we're telling cinema is that when this plane effector is enabled, the original scale of the grass assets, which if we consider them to have a scale of one, is now being decreased by one. So they're down to zero. So we can't see anything right now. So if we just disable that plane, you're gonna see that come back. And then when we enable it, they've disappeared. So what we need to do now is create a fall off so we can specify where this effector is active. And that's really easy to do. All we need to do is go to fall off and hit linear field. By default, it's gonna be set to be on the X axis. So it's gonna be going from left to right. So you can see we have all the grass on the left and none on the right, which in this case is not what we want. So we need to go to our linear field, change the direction from X plus to Y plus, which is gonna do this up down effect, and then change the length of our fall off down to something like, I don't know, five centimeters, something like that. Okay, so you can see how this is starting to work. We've now got all the assets underneath the water, but nothing above it. And we want the opposite of that. So all we need to do is go to the remapping tab and hit invert. Now this is gonna do the complete opposite. So now we've got no grass underneath the water and all the grass on top of the landscape, which is perfect. So we can now drag this linear field up and down. So I could drop this down and get more of it to be scattered under the water or I could drag it up so that it's only scattered on the very top of the landscape. And this is a very simple setup, so you can use all different types of fall offs to create some really interesting results. But for this particular case, this is the easiest way to kind of restrict any scattering below a certain level. So I'm actually gonna disable that because I think it's quite nice to have the grass underneath the water, adds some really nice kind of detail underneath there. And yeah, like I said, I used a million for the final count. So let's just try to do that quickly just to show you what it looks like. But that essentially is the setup for this landscape. Um, hopefully I kind of explained everything well. Um, you can see now that there's loads more on there. It's kind of quite vibrant. So let's just drop that down. Something like this. Let's see how that looks. It's going to take a minute to update. Yeah, we're getting there. So I'm just gonna kind of play with that. So yeah, essentially that is the setup for the scene. Hopefully you guys have found this helpful and hopefully I explained everything well enough. Uh, if you did find it helpful, drop a comment in the comments section down below. And if you have any feedback or ideas for future videos, let me know about those too. I really, really appreciate all your comments and all your feedback. I read every single one of them and try to reply to as many as I can. So yeah, thanks again for watching guys. Really appreciate all the love and support recently. It really, really does mean the world to me. Um, hit that like button if you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any updates about future videos. And until next time, enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are in the world, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.